the way that Manoah responds and the way his wife responds. Look at it in verse 21, starting there. The angel of the Lord appeared no more to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. And Manoah said to his wife, We shall surely die, for we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If the Lord had meant to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering at our hands, or shown us all these things, or now announced to us such things as these. And the woman bore a son, and called his name Samson, which means the sun, S-U-N, the sunlight. And the young man grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him at Mahena Dan, between Zorah and Eshtaol. I want you to notice the Lord is far more holy than you have ever imagined. Some people, when they read passages like this in the Old Testament, and some commentators will tell you, well, that's the Old Testament God. But in the New Testament, God is far more nice. That's just ridiculous. Jesus killed two people who lied about how much they gave in the offering on a Sunday. He killed Herod when Herod didn't offer him up the honor that was due his name. When everyone was saying, the voice of a God and not of man. And Herod didn't say, I'm not God. And Jesus killed him. This is the same God. Old Testament, New Testament, same God. This is the right response. Manoah actually responds correctly. His is understanding the holiness of God and the law of God and that we have broken God's law and no one can see the face of the Lord and live. That's literally what the Lord told Moses in Exodus 33, 20. Moses says, I want to see your glory. And the Lord says, no one can see me face to face and live. So Manoah responds, we're dead. We just saw the Lord. We're dead. And he's, he's right. They should be. Manoah represents someone who is looking at the law of God, the holiness of God, the justice of God, and saying, if God gives us what we deserve, we're dead. And then Manoah's wife, she represents, doesn't she, something of the gospel of God and God's loving kindness? Because she says, no, if the Lord had meant to kill us, he wouldn't have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering at our hands or shown us all these things or announced to us such things as these. She represents the fact that at the same time, the Lord is more holy than you've ever imagined. And he is more loving than you've ever imagined. Because in his holiness, we should die for our sin. But in his love, he sent his son, the angel of the Lord, to actually become a man, to enter into the fires of the offering for sin and bearing our shame, die for our sin on the cross. Note the holiness of God. We should die. And the love of God. He's not going to kill us. He has accepted an offering in our place. Isn't that amazing? Do you see that the whole Bible is about Jesus? You can't read this passage without going, well, how is that possible? It's possible because the one who Samson actually is supposed to represent, this whole narrative is much like the narrative of the Lord Jesus' birth. Someone who you would not think would have a baby, Mary, who's not married and maybe 14 years old, she conceives through the power of God. An angel comes to her. She bears a son. The same words that are used here, the Lord blessed him, the spirit of the Lord was upon him. He grew in wisdom and stature with God and man. This story of Samson is really not about Samson, especially in chapter 13. It's made for us to look to, to Jesus. I think it's not without accident or coincidence 
that we know who the angel of Yahweh is, right? The Lord Jesus. And then all throughout this passage, we've got the angel of Yahweh, the angel of God, and then Manoah and his wife call him a man of God. He's a man and he's God. There's even hints right there that There is coming one, one day, about 1,100 years after this, who will actually not be confused to be God and man, but will be the God-man. And he will come and be merciful and kind and wonderful, holy and loving. Look to the one, trust the one that this whole passage is about, the angel of the Lord, who entered the flames of the sacrifice for you. Look at him. He's wonderful. Judges tells the sad story of the people doing what was right in their own eyes, which led to constant misery and the need for a deliverer. In simplest terms, the book of Judges reveals how the Lord's people are half-hearted at best and full-blown idolatrous at worst. The story of Judges should ultimately make us long for the true and better deliverer, Jesus. Jesus is the king who not only rules over his people with justice and equity, but also with grace and mercy. He is the king who, at great cost to himself, delivers us from all danger and rules over us in all joy. He is the eternal king we need and long for.